welcome back. In the previous video, we moved this gorilla from his own independent image to the one that you're seeing on screen right now. Now we need to reduce the size of the gorilla because as you can see, he's far too big at present. And I'll show you a few things about the transformation controls along the way. So let's start by zooming out of the image until we can see the whole thing. And now thanks to us having the move tool active, the show bounding box option turned on in the tool options panel and the layer selected, we get this box around the layer. Now you may also hear this being called a transformation box because it basically allows us to transform the layer and by transform I mean change the size, the angle and generally distort it in any way that we please. Now if we didn't have the move tool active we would simply need to choose the free transform option to make any kind of changes we're about to make and of course get this bounding box around the image which is what lets us make those kind of changes in the first place. So let's first of all click the hand tool so the bounding box surrounding the layer disappears and now to find the transformation controls we come up to the image menu and then click on transform and as you can see we get four different transforming options free transform, skew, distort and perspective. You can go ahead and try any of them but in this video we're going to use the free transform option which actually gives us access to all the other transformation controls anyway. To so go ahead and choose free transform and we'll see a similar box appear around the layer we also get the familiar accept and cancel options at the bottom here in addition to that we open up the tool options for this specific command down here at the bottom the panel contains many of the options that are now available to us so first of all we can decide if we want to rotate scale or skew the layer and we can do any of those by making sure it's active and then just dragging any one of these corner points around inside the image. So for example, I'll choose scale and now we can drag the corner points to scale the layer up, make it bigger, or we can scale it down to make it smaller like this. Next to these options we get to set our reference point which by default will be set to the center. So if I choose rotate and then just position the cursor outside of the layer like this I can rotate the entire thing from the center point however if I set this to the top center now when I rotate the layer it's being modified from that new reference point well, I'll go ahead and click the center point again and there we go we also get some numerical controls over here so we can use these for really specific measurements so our previous changes have left this layer wonky as you can see on screen well I can straighten it up again by just changing the angle value to zero I can then return the layer to its original size by using these width and height options right here so at the moment you can see that both are smaller than 100% which is the original size of every image that you open up here inside using the transformation controls so let's just return this constrain proportions option on so we can maintain our width and height ratio and then just change one of these values to 100% and we return the layer to its previous self. Now one important thing to know is that whilst we were working away at a single pass of the transformation controls it's perfectly fine to carry out a load of changes like I just did but it wouldn't be a very good idea to confirm the changes and then come back and make some more and then confirm again and then come and make some more what I'm trying to say is that when you transform your layer you're carrying out what we like to call a destructive modification so once is fine but two, three, four times and you're going to see some degradation in the image okay so let's see if we can make some meaningful alterations to the layer now let's make sure that scale is active and then drag the top left corner point down and to the right and we'll make him smaller than we need then I'll drag the whole object to the bottom right side of the image and that should snap nicely into position like you see here we'll then grab the 
top left corner point again and this time we want to ensure the gorilla is of the right height so I'd say somewhere about three quarters between the top of the lion's head and the top of the image so somewhere about here should work out quite well once we have it in position I can either press the green tick mark to accept the changes or I can press the enter or return key on the keyboard well once again we have achieved our mission just to keep things neat and tidy I'm going to rename the gorilla layer by double left clicking on the name and of course I'll enter gorilla as the layers new official name finally I'm going to do the same with the lion layer and I'll go ahead and rename this one as well I'll just give this the name of lion as you'd expect and there we go as well you can now see that we have transformed the gorilla into position next up we're going to look at blending him in a little bit better to make the whole thing look a little more realistic than it does right now and I think that most people will realize that this isn't an authentic image but that's not what we're going for so we don't need people to think that what we want is for people to see an effect that is incorporated into a poster and so we'll do our blending to make sure that the image is looking as good as it can be inside the very next video. Mm -hmm.